About a month ago, the whole country's eyes were on Bessemer, Alabama. I know the stereotypical reasoning would be that something racist happened in Alabama, and if you did think that, then I think you're pretty ignorant to the, civ- the history of civil rights in that state. You know, I mean, I guess you could have also guessed that there was a problem with a tide that just wouldn't stop rolling, and, and that would have been a better guess than something racist. I mean, that's not to say that racism doesn't exist in that state, but rather that there is far more to that state than just that one thing. But the reason why everybody was so tuned in to Bessemer was uh, over the vote to unionize at Amazon. The Retail Workers and Department Store Union, or RWDSU, would have been the union that would represent Amazon, Amazon workers to ensure that megalomania doesn't rule the workplace. And unfortunately, the workers at Amazon voted the union down. Now, before everyone freaks out and says, see, see, nobody wants your commie, pinko, Russia, Putin, socialist union. Huh? Okay, Russia, 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 Russia. This vote wasn't a consequence of the working class not wanting to unionize, but rather a mix of fear pressure, corporate propaganda, and failure on behalf of the union itself. An Amazon employee said the most important thing before a union vote is for anger at the bosses to be stronger than fear. And this was a tactic that Amazon employed. And apparently fear got a living wage of $30 an hour and health care covered and a tax break. Fear was treated way better than like most Amazon employees. Look, there was nonstop bombardment of anti-union propaganda where they said things like, you know, unions will cause you to lose pay or your health insurance or they'll eat your babies and make you sterile. Okay, so that last one might be a, a slight exaggeration, but the key word there is slight. I think there might still be some people that believe that unions do make you sterile because of communism. Like, Amazon employees reported that they were bombarded with this kind of information on the daily. And there was very little information available to counter the lies Amazon told its employees about unionization. These lies are similar to the lies uh, told about socialism by capitalists. The lies all revolve around rights being taken away, right? If you want if you want socialism, you'll have to wear the same thing and eat the same thing and live in the same house and go to the bathroom at the same time. Uh, yeah, d- that's not true at all. In fact, if we had socialism running things in America, we'd have more rights and they'd actually get respected. I mean, that's a problem with capitalism and democracy is that it has rights It just doesn't respect them when it comes to the working class. It's the same kind of lies capitalism likes to promote about the South. Everyone is just a bunch of dumb rednecks that are racist and that might make you sterile. I mean, the word redneck itself has been co-opted by capitalists to mean ignorant. Rednecks were radical socialists that took on big industries to ensure the working class were taken care of and respected. The state of West Virginia was filled with radical rednecks that helped miners make real money. And and that's not an exaggeration either. Miners were paid in fake money invented by the mining companies called scripts, and they could only spend it in the mine towns. That's how capitalists operate. They reinvent slavery for the sake of their own profits. Look, if you made your riches by enslaving people or tormenting the working class, then you're not rich. If you gained your wealth and the suffering of others at the cost of your own soul and humanity, then you're not wealthy at all. Amazon, a capitalist corporation run by super capitalist Jeff Bezos, has been eviscerating rights from their workers left and right. Amazon has a new app called Mentor, which uses cameras and delivery vans to monitor the road, the sides, and the driver's face. Now, the claim is that it would reduce accidents on the road, but I think it's really for Jeff Bezos to study human expressions so he can fake them in public. Right? Just, see? 
This is our human smile. It does it bring you comfort knowing that I have a human smile? Do you feel safe now? And look, this is also not an exaggeration, right? Billionaires have so much money that they lose touch with their own humanity. So they're not really homo sapiens, but homo douchebagus or homo fuckfacius. Those are, those are scientific terms. You, you, you can't argue with that science. Now, Jeff Bezos also made his employees download an app that tracks their whereabouts on and off the clock. Jeff Bezos just made himself into the worst version of Santa. He knows when you're sleeping because it affects his bottom line. Hey, Bezos, Lex Luthor called and he said, stop it. Big Brother just gave him a golf clap there. I mean, these tactics are a clear violation of the Fourth Amendment, which grants we the people the right to privacy. The biggest way Amazon used fear to prevent unionization was the use of an illegal mailbox in their parking lots. Union votes were to be mailed out to prevent one side from controlling or manipulating the votes. The National Labor Relations Board, or NLRB, told Amazon that they can't do something like that, but Bezos don't give a shit. He has enough money to buy and shut down the NLRB because in capitalist America, the government is owned and operated by corporations. And after he pressured the United States Postal Service, he put this illegal mailbox in the parking lot at Bessemer. Now, he did mail the NLRB a postcard with a picture of himself naked and flipping them the bird. Now, this meant that the workers had to vote in front of their supervisors who had been bombarding them with anti-union propaganda and even threatening them with job loss if they did vote for unionization. I mean, this harkens back to the days of intimidation at the polls when black folks wanted to exercise their rights as citizens. I mean, what was next? A, a, a poll tax or a literacy test or a shotgun at the, at the polls to prevent unionization? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Jeff Bezos' hero was Jim Crow. Now, the counter to this fear and propaganda would have been a strong union presence at the workplace. The RWDSU had very few people passing out flyers or canvassing the community for unionization. The union also didn't hold rallies with Amazon employees, and if they didn't do that, they also didn't reach out to other unions for solidarity. The blunt way of putting this is, that to, is, is to say that the union didn't fucking show up. They let Amazon carry out their blatant lies, fear pressure, and propaganda. But I've mentioned this before, the World Socialist website and Left Voice have both reported that the RWDSU has a record of siding with corporations instead of the workers. But this has been a long-standing problem with large corporate business unions. They forget about the workers. Most large unions, like the AFL-CIO, funnel the working class into the Democratic Party. And this is despite the fact that Democrats like Joe Biden are responsible for unions losing power. Back in 1947, the Taft-Hartley Act was written by two Republicans and approved by Democrat Harry Truman and ensured that unions would have very limited powers when it comes to collective bargaining. And Truman and Biden are very similar people. They're both racist, pathological liars that want people to fawn over breadcrumbs. And this is the reason why workers have to vote for a union and why Amazon can do whatever it takes to manipulate and ensure that they continue abusing their employees for profit. And these employees are abused and traumatized by the company they work for, which is not why somebody gets a job. And conditions are so bad that a few days after the vote to unionize failed, a worker at Bessemer collapsed and died on the job. If you're wondering why people, quote, don't want to work anymore, it's because of corporations like Amazon. These assholes are no longer job creators, but they're worker assassins. The other employees were shocked, but don't worry, Amazon did offer them some grief counseling. Okay, look, here's a, a little snippet of the Amazon uh, grief counseling, right? Uh, are you sad? Okay, buck up, right? We're, we're here to make deliveries within 30 minutes or less, or else it's free. 
You think Domino's is better than Amazon? Huh? Tuck your sadness away and worship the Bezos. Kiss the ring. Kiss the ring. The AFL-CIO also ran a, quote, shadow campaign to get Joe Biden elected. Time Magazine reported, using the phrase shadow campaign and conspiracy to show how an advisor to the president of the AFL-CIO used targeted ads, psychographics, and manipulation to sway voters to vote for Biden. Now, Biden did say he was going to make unions strong again, but he wasn't talking to unions that actually go to bat for the workers like the United Mine Workers Association of the 20s, he was addressing the AFL-CIO, which has a history of racism and sexism. Unions that support and funnel workers into a party to get a head nod from chairman, I mean, President Biden. This bipartisan attack to ensure unions have very little power has allowed companies like Amazon to use underhanded tactics to prevent the union from being even in the thoughts of their workers. In November of 2020, it was revealed that Amazon is using Global Security Operations Center, which hires former intelligence analysts to gather information about unionization at their plants. They hired the historically brutal strike-breaking company, the Pinkerton Incorporated, to infiltrate and spy on workers. D does anybody miss the days when supervillains plotted to block out the sun or collect all the birds for themselves? And really, who decides their career path is making the working class's life miserable forever? And, and that's what intelligent agents do, right? The CIA runs coups in nations that democratically elected a socialist, and the FBI murders people that are trying to feed the hungry. The best thing for Amazon workers now is to form a rank-and-file safety committee that collectively, bar co that collectively bargains directly with management. And this would be an organized group of workers who have a list of demands, and, those dema and if those demands are not met they call a strike they can empower themselves and and rather than a corporatized union which is just going to funnel them into the democratic party machine the same democratic party machine that allows jeff bezos to continue stripping workers rights and torture employees a rank and file safety committee would do exactly what the labor movement and the radical rednecks wanted to do and unite the working class against the bourgeoisie hell-bent on making our lives miserable. And that has been your Dispatch for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please make sure that you hit the like button, the share button, get the word out about this, because independent media uh, very much depends on you guys. It, we we, we uh, are, are pretty censored on some of the larger uh, corporate uh, video and streaming platforms like YouTube and Facebook, uh, which is why we depend on you guys to hit that like button and share button so that we can we can fight back against that algorithm, uh, fight back against those algorithmic amplifications. Uh, and follow me on Rockfin. Go go to rockfin.com slash kushmohanhaha uh, or, or go to odyssey at uh, odyssey.com and look up kushmohanhaha and you'll find my channel there. Uh, I upload a, a, a lot of content, ton of free content on those platforms. There's some there's some premium content for uh, the premium members as well. Uh, but uh, like I said, it's up to it's up to you guys. We very much depend on you guys to fight back against uh, against the corporate censorship. That uh, I've got my live virtual comedy shows back in action, and the very last Friday of every single month, they happen at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are $10, and every month it's a brand new show covering a brand new sociopolitical topic that you won't hear on corporate mainstream networks. And as a bonus, uh, some months you might get to hear a weird, quirky story from me related to the topic of discussion, or there might be a special guest joining the show. These are musicians, storytellers, comedians, activists, so on and so forth. Uh, they, they will be uh, kicking off the show uh, with a with a set at the at the top, and then it'll lead right into the socio political commentary. Uh, and look, if ten bucks is a is a little bit too expensive, I totally understand. Shoot me a message or an email, and I will make sure that you get a ticket to come check out the show via Zoom. 
secondly, if you want to uh, financially contribute to the show and you are on stable financial ground, you can do so at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A dot com slash donate. The biggest way you can help is by becoming a sustaining member, make monthly contributions, uh, which means that you get free tickets to the virtual comedy shows that I just talked about and the live ones when the live ones come back. Uh, you also get early access to a certain Forkful of Noodles videos. You get to ask me questions, which I'll then respond to either in live streams, uh, standalone videos, or as a segment on the virtual comedy shows that I do. And then those will be released as premium exclusive content just for the members. Uh, you get uh, addition, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content. So tons of things for becoming a uh, sustaining member. But if sustaining membership isn't in your cards, you can also make a one-time donation as well. And um, I have now included a statement of transparency, which lets you know exactly what you're contributing to um, and what you're helping me uh, uh, achieve, what goals you're helping me achieve by becoming a sustaining member, by, by, by getting me one step closer to making this my full-time job again. It, 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 be doing comedy full-time and creating content full-time was my full, uh, was my job full uh, pre-pandemic, but uh, because of the the way the world is now, um, I'm unable to do that without uh, without the do without donations from you guys, from the people. And lastly, I want to mention that I do have a online merch store. That's right, I've got uh, T-shirts, I've got mugs, hoodies, you name it, it's there probably, kind of. Uh, but <laughs> it's available on my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, it's the merch tab. And uh, there, all of the designs have been made by me. There's seven designs uh, on the site right now, but that's due to probably go up. I'll probably make newer designs and release them as, as, as time goes on. Um, but there's a Julian Assange shirt that's available right now, and I'm going to donate 100% of all of the profits made from that shirt to pro-Assange um, groups and journalists and activists. Uh, people like Action for Assange, right? Uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Medhurst, folks like that. Uh, I'm going to make my donations to them. Um, so, so if you want to help, um, you know, people that are covering Assange, uh, hit the spotlight a little bit more, then, then grab that shirt because I'm donating all of that to them. Uh, and last but not least, you can grab all of my stand-up comedy albums directly off of my Bandcamp at krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. My albums are available for a pay-what-you-want uh, price range on Bandcamp, but if you just want to listen to them and you don't want to, you know, have them take up room in your computer, I totally get it. Uh, you can also stream them off of Pandora. It's available on iTunes and uh, uh, Google Play, all of, the, all of the ways that you listen to music. Uh, with all that said and done, uh, thank you guys for tuning into the show. Thank you guys for being regular listeners to the show. I very much appreciate it. And thank you to all the people that do donate irregularly and have become sustaining members because uh, I wouldn't be able to continue doing this without you guys. So you guys really make this uh, possible. And I am very, very, very appreciative of that. 